Hey everybody, Aaron here. Welcome back to another anime review. Today we look at the anime movie known as Gantz Zero. Now, I was so happy to hear that Gantz Zero is coming out. That I, even though I have the flu right now, so that's why I apologize if my voice sounds all nasally and stuff like that. You know, I wanted to get this review out to you as soon as possible, guys and girls, because honestly, this was an awesome movie. I really loved it. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan of Gantz. I really love the story behind it, the dark kind of tones that it sets in its story and the concepts. Um, you know, I do have some issues with the series in general, like the anime, I have issues with the over-sexualization stuff at times, and also I do have some issues, of course, in the manga, the same thing. Uh, I do have more issues with the anime than I do with the manga, because the anime does cut out a lot of stuff and it wasn't completed, so it's like at the halfway point and never ever saw a light of day in terms of any animation. So that's why when I heard that the anime was coming out, like an anime movie, excuse me, for Gantz, I was stoked. I was like, oh shit, let me go check that out. And even more so what I heard about where it takes place. Now, I'll tell you guys and girls this right now. If you're a newcomer, do not fret. You can watch this movie without any prior knowledge of Gantz. Um, and actually, what's funny about this is that's how well this movie was done. I give props to the director of this because it's done in a way that if you are a newcomer, you won't need to know too much backstory. If you're a fan, you'll know exactly where this takes place. This takes place uh, roughly around the halfway point of the manga after a whole series of events happen. I'm not going to spoil it for newcomers because I don't want to do that, but fans will know exactly where this starts off because of the characters that are introduced at the beginning of the movie. Now, Gant Zero takes place um, in Tokyo, of course, and the concept is is that we have our young man, Kato. Kato is a young high school student who unfortunately gets killed off by a uh, knife-wielding murderer who is just a psychopath and he just stabs him. And he, he was more so trying to help this old man after he got stabbed, but, you know, Kato ends up getting killed. Now, when Kato gets, you know, wakes up all of a sudden, though, he's in a strange room with a black orb in front of him and two people dressed in these weird outfits telling him that he technically died, but at the same time he's kind of alive, where he gets put into a game where he must score points if he wants to have any chance of coming back to life by killing off creatures, aliens, and monsters that exist in Tokyo that the world right now is seeing because they're coming out of the woodwork and his team is like really the only ones that are able to do it for the sentient being known as Gantz, which is, like I said, the giant black orb that, you know, tells them, hey, listen, you have to do this by a certain time, etc. Otherwise, they will die completely. Now... You know, fans will know the darker stuff that Gantz has to offer. And unfortunately, probably the weakest part of the movie is the fact that it doesn't really focus on some of the more detailed lore behind Gantz. It focuses more on just this one incident which takes place, and it's more so a one giant battle. Which, don't get me wrong, was not bad at all. It was awesome to see. But, you know, if you really want to know a lot more about Gantz, I would really suggest maybe reading some of the manga first and foremost before watching the movie. But you don't have to. I'm not saying you really have to. But I'm just saying you do miss out on some little lore and did tidbits of characters and stuff like that. Um, you know, I'll tell you right now, I watched this all in English. I did listen to the Japanese. I'd say I probably prefer the Japanese dub for this, to be honest with you. But it's not a big deal. I really think the English cast was fine. I watched the whole thing in English, so I mean, it's not really a big deal. But, you know, it did hit some kind of weaker acting moments. The voice actors really were hit or miss at times. Uh, sometimes they were really well done and sometimes they were kind of like, meh. Uh, Music-wise, I love the music. I thought the music was awesome. The animation really though is what I want to focus on where this is probably one of the best parts of, of Gantz Zero is the fact that it looks gorgeous. I mean, this looks like a Final Fantasy anime movie and it was just so... The CGI was so well done. There are some parts that are a little weaker in terms of CGI. It's more so the characters at times look a little weak and there's some questionable character designs in general, but it's not really a big deal enough that I say it's any issue with it. Um, probably, like I said, the only issue I have with this whole movie is the fact that I wish it would have delved into Gantz a little bit more, but I understand that they don't want to do that because I think they would try to aim more fans of the series. But like I said, I give them credit for the most part for saying that, you know, hey, even a newcomer can enjoy this movie. And I, I, that's really kind of a rare thing in general for anime movies because typically anime movies based off of series or ongoing series or manga etc tend to have issues with that like where you can't jump into it without knowing some of the past lore and in this case you really don't need to know that which i really have to reinforce because that's something so rare for anime movies um but you know like i said it's probably the only issue i have with it is that you know at times the cgi is a little bit like weaker and at times, I wish they would have a little more lore in it. But overall, I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was a well-done movie. Um, you know, I, like I said, the voice acting in English especially is kind of weak. But, you know, Japanese is okay. I, I think more so I'd rather watch it in English just so I could focus on every little tidbit of action that's going on screen. Because trust me, if you love gory things that are like... 
if you know Gantz at all, you know that this is a gore fest movie. This is something definitely rated M. Uh, there's blood flying from creatures and humans alike. The whole concept is crazy, and I really don't want to spoil any of the concepts in the show because it's more so something that I think when you get into watching it and you just are surprised by almost the weird esque, like the weird esque game that's thrown that these characters are thrown into, it's very interesting and it's always something kind of baffling to me that people have not tried Gantz at least once because I've met a lot of people I've never heard of Gantz and that's such a shame. You know, if you've never seen the series, really, I, I have to say. Go check out the series out if you're a huge anime fan. If you don't like anime, you more so are focused on manga, go check out the manga for it because the manga is finished as of now. It's been done for several years, but I love the manga series. It was really well done. Um, but going back to this movie, honestly, if I had to review this between an A through F, I thought about this and I was going to give this a lower score at first, but you know what? I can't find too many issues with it. That's why I have to give it an A minus at least. Because honestly, you know, besides being a fan of the series, I was really surprised on how well this movie came out for I think someone that hasn't, because I haven't read the manga series in quite some time, it's been at least three or four years um, since I've read it. I think the last last chapter I read when it finished was what I finished at, so whenever that came out, that's when I stopped reading and stopped really paying attention to the series at all. But, you know, I went right into this and I was like, oh, I know who these characters are. I remember Kato, I remember the old man, etc. I remember Nishiki, who's the one um, weird kind of stealth dude who kind of acts like an asshole. You know, it was interesting to see that. Overall, though, I really highly recommend checking this out. This is on Netflix, so you can watch it right now if you have a Netflix account. It, you know, that's really awesome. I think that's really well done of Netflix to do that. So, honestly, guys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this review. Like I said, I apologize for my voice and all that. Uh, I will have a review out for Tales later today, so I'll talk to you then. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.